everyone it's just a quick video again today uh, today's video is about standing waves again uh, I want to go through and talk about the standing waves between your partnered output coils now it's really easy to get this whole situation this whole um, concept confused and a lot of people do unfortunately um, a standing wave uh, can be electric or it can be magnetic okay a magnetic standing wave is different from a standing wave on the electric side now because we're dealing with both we are dealing with electromagnetic standing waves which each um, the voltage in the magnetic field are supposed to be at 90 degrees uh, I always and most people do I always depict the current at 90 degrees from the magnetic field. It's easier image to understand. It's an e easier image to um, to realize. Um, and all you need to do is just hold your right hand grip rule up, and you'll see the 90 degrees there. So the right hand grip rule, if the thumb is pointing in the direction of the north pole, then the current will wrap around at 90 degrees through your fingers, uh, and that's conventional current. Again, we don't need to be uh, silly about this. Most people know about conventional current. Not everybody knows about how current really flows. So I always use conventional current. Uh, again, for those people out there that like to hop on the uh, numpty clump bandwagon uh, and go on and on and on about it, who cares? Get over it, grow up, all that sort of stuff. You know where I'm coming from. Okay, conventional current. Um, now, a standing wave. What is a standing wave? A standing wave is if you have the magnetic field B uh, in superposition to another magnetic field B, and if the vector of B cancels, in other words, short version, if this coil magnetically opposes this coil, then we get a current standing wave. The current will double from E on 2 to E, remembering what Floyd Sweet told us, uh, in a specific situation the magnetic field can either double in a standing wave or the current can double in a standing wave. And we are focusing specifically on cancelling the magnetic field and doubling the current field. Okay, again, right hand grip rule shows the 90 degree difference. Uh, visualizing a plane, you've seen the image plenty of times on my videos before. Uh, red is the magnetic field, vector arrows um, equal in mag magnitude pointing up and equal in magnitude pointing down. Uh, they effectively cancel each other out, they become zero and when that happens, when they're in phase, um, the current will double from, uh, from what it was before to double the current to I. Um, okay, now, uh, simplicity. We have to start thinking about the simplicity of these machines. Okay, if this coil here has a changing current, it will induce a voltage in this coil over here. Okay, the same is true the other way around. If this coil over, over here has a changing current, this coil over here will induce a voltage across the terminals. And remember, a voltage is the difference in potential. The po difference in potential is the free electrons uh, that gather uh, in greater amplitude on one terminal compared to the other, okay? A voltage is a difference in potential. A potential is the charge, the number of charges Okay, uh, two charges is twice the charge, three charges is three times the charge, you, you get the idea, uh, on one terminal. Now a coil is full of charge. The charge in a coil is, is absolutely hugely massive. Uh, you can work it out, you can go through and you can uh, calculate out how many grams are in a, um, I forget the name now, a mole. M M O L, I think it's called. It's uh, mole is short for molecular um, structure. Okay, so you can work out how much charge, how many electrons 
um, or how many atoms in a mole uh, and the number of atoms in just a very very small piece of copper, to, copper is absolutely massive billions and billions and billions of atoms all having 29 electrons okay so a smallest piece of copper has a huge huge number of charges charges are all random okay moving a magnetic field across the coil at right angles okay will produce a separation of charges again same as the last video it separates charges pushes the charges down to one terminal uh, leaves a um, uh, leaves a loss uh, or leaves a uh, a lack of charges on the other terminal now some people will say it pushes positive charges to the other terminal okay because uh, if you go through and if you look at the capacitor plates on a capacitor some will say that the plates are charged with positive and negative charges um, so there is a huge question mark in science about uh, do positive charges exist as well as negative charges yes they do do they move question mark on that okay positive charge example would be the uh, proton neutron having no charge okay we have protons neutrons and electrons in the atom in the copper atom uh, 29 protons uh, also so do they move someone's yet to prove it okay all right so the generation of electrical energy now you, you can see a symmetrical machine there okay there's symmetry between the two coils there's two coils the two coils have symmetry okay electrically they have symmetry the currents flowing in both coils both at the same time produce the same magnetic field okay so the symmetry between the magnetic fields obviously this depends on certain factors but there's symmetry there now at any one time there's always 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 symmetry in a machine but you can also have asymmetry and that's where science is lacking science is lacking its asymmetry okay again covered in a previous video but if you were to think about asymmetry what would we do what what would we do to make this machine asymmetric okay all we need to do is put a, a third coil on there have these two coils oppose each other and by the very fact that the partner and output coils oppose each other then one of those coils must assist your input okay if your input is opposed by both coils it's not asymmetrical it's still a symmetrical machine to make it asymmetrical you must have three different forces in the machine you must have two uh, opposition between your partnered output coils which means one of your partnered output coils must assist your input very very simple uh, not hard anybody knows about force it's about getting your forces asymmetrical as well force is mmf okay magnemotive force also covered in previous videos so if you were to look at the force you would say that one unit of force on your input coil one unit of force on partner output coil one one unit of force on partner output coil two so it would be one plus negative one plus one equals one um, okay, I'm going to keep this video short because I've been super busy lately. Uh, I've got some things going on. Um, now, I just want to say, if you can build an electric transformer, you can build these machines. Okay, The key to these machines is start by building a transformer. Okay, build, Put your input coil over top of this coil here. Okay, Pulse your input coil and get an output on your output terminals here okay so that's a start and then add your second partnered output coil okay partnered up coil two add that coil and make sure that the polarity of that coil assists your input okay now as you work on the machine you'll see that partnered output coil two will drop your input down dramatically but you still get the same output. This is the key. 
this is where most of these people are going wrong, okay? You see all these fancy, fancy experiments on the internet, but they're all working with symmetry. They don't know what they're doing. Even the professionals don't know what they're doing, okay? So you've got to get your input down. <clears throat> working on getting your input down is the key. That's the path to making these machines work, okay? If you can get a whole single watt out on these terminals here, but are only putting half a watt in on your input coil, then this coil over here is adding to your system one half of a watt. Okay, very, very simple. Very simple. And again, if you think about the forces, okay, then this coil over here, if it assists your input coil, this coil over here assists your input coil, then this coil over here will see the same force as a typical transformer, but instead of all of that force coming from your input coil, it comes from this coil and your input coil. So the input force to the system is doubled. Okay? Is doubled. The system sees double the input force. It's extremely simple. This is so, so simple. Now, standard magnetic rules mostly apply to these machines. Not all, but most. Some equations don't work. Some of the equations for predicting uh, power in the machine that I've found don't work. There's always excess power in these machines once you have them running right. Now, again, I want to go back to the standing wave that we started off with at the start. Now, a standing wave must have phase and amplitude matched. So the phase between these two coils must be matched. The amplitude between these two coils must be matched. Now I'm talking about amplitude and current specifically. They say current through turns, the MMF, you need to match them at least as close as possible. Okay? Now this is really, really simple, extremely easy. Resonance is important. Okay? Your input coil brings your partnered output coils into resonance. Once you achieve resonance between the two coils, your input will drop right, right down, okay? Your input will, will half or even go to zero or sometimes, once you build these machines properly, your input can actually go to negative numbers. So that means you have coils with output everywhere, including your input coil. So you have an output on this coil, you have an output on this coil over here, plus your input coil, which initially carries power, okay, it carries, a, it, it has a voltage across the terminals, it carries a current, so there's an initial power there, but after that coil switched off, then the input coil will go negative, negative current, and then it'll push power back to your source. Now, sometimes that power can go negative, and I'm talking about average power over time, which everybody should be. Now, I just want to say real quick, I did have a question on current. What's the definition? What's your definition of current? Now I stick to the exact same definitions as all the Triple E uh, literature say, as all the international units of standards or stand, standard units. Um, I stick to the very, very same definitions. Okay, current is 6.24, and there's a big long number after it times 10 to the 18th electrons per second equals 1 ampere, okay? 1 ampere is that number of electrons moving past a single terminal in one second. It's a huge number of electrons, huge number. But remember, you've got electrons to spare. The copper coil itself has billions of electrons. Billions and billions and billions. So there's tons of electrons there. The electrons are freed if you put them under pressure. And then once you put them under pressure, you accelerate them down the wire. That's what bucking coils do. 
It's what partnered output coils do. So if everybody would have put two and two together, we'd all get the same answer. The problem is that there's a lot of people out there that don't want to put two and two together. Some people out there want to be difficult. Some people out there want to run off down rabbit holes. Some people out there don't want to do these very simple, very cheap experiments and show that this works. Whereas nearly all of the AboveUnity.com members have done so, have working machines. Some have self-powering machines. They just sit there on the bench and run. Okay, this is not hard. With a little bit of experience, you can do it. Alright, everybody, best wishes. Take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, look after those that are close to you, and get off your backsides and do it, huh? Good on you.